Well, how do the charms to Zai, Captain of the Steves. Now, during my live stream the other day, people were telling me about the PS5 Pro. They wanted me to do a reaction video. Now, I brought the video up on screen, and all I'd done was down at the bottom here, I used the seek bar just to find somewhere to get an interesting background that's got the PS5 Pro on it, just for this scene. Okay, so I haven't watched this. We're going to rewind it all the way to the start. I don't know whether rewind is even a thing anymore, you know? I'm going to make sure I've got volume on this, and we're going to hit on up play. So let's just make sure I've got my PC unmuted. I think I do. Let's hit play on this then. There we go. Let's try that again. And play. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and Why? how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. Okay. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay, with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. Mm -hmm. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic... I still haven't seen the game as nice as the one on that previous slide deck. I mean, I know that was probably some sort of benchmarky type thing, but there still isn't a game on the PlayStation, in my opinion, that shows off Lumen to that sort of extent. Or, or any of the bits and bobs and bells and whistles that the PlayStation 5 has to offer. ...worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the yep. realism that comes from real-time global illumination. Yep. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds, and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's one Okay, so that's all PlayStation 5, which we all know. And if you jump on over to the PlayStation Store, other than those titles that he's just shown off, there's not all that many other titles that really push the PlayStation to its limits yet. Um, I still don't think we've seen next-gen titles other than maybe Horizon, whatever it was. I mean, that, that game is pretty darn impressive. And I would say Avatar, the one that he showed, and Pandora, is fairly pr impressive. But other than that, I haven't seen much that's gone, wow. Wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. The reason why I just side them, people, is pretty much every single game developer has said, can you make this for last gen as well as current gen? And they have to do that balancing act of trying to get it out on different platforms. And now they've just added another one to the mix. That's what, that's why I've just side. It's just gonna, this has just added another development freaking layer, another layer of complexity on for anybody that's gonna be developing a game. Right, now we've got to do PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 Slim, all the VR stuff for PlayStation, and now PlayStation 5 Pro. Nice one, Sony. Brilliant. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run 60 frames per second. Hmm. 
mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frames Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to actually see the difference. <laughs> this is... They like, spot the difference. I... Oh, hold on. This is PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 5. Fidelity versus performance. I'm not seeing any difference at all. Game rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Right. Removing that decision or at least narrowing that divide is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Um, so what is this new GPU? Can't you tell us what it is? I mean, I'd imagine it's AMD, but is it like a 7... You know, is it close to a 7900 graphics card sort of GPU? I mean, what exactly are we looking at? I mean, yes, 45% faster. Well, the latest graphics cards by AMD, like the 7900 series, are like four times faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a okay. streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. Cool. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. Right. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. But does it game make it look like a swap? Adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing. With okay, so this upscaling stuff that he just mentioned, on PC, on AMD cards, I turn it off a lot of the time. Although it looks great to me while I'm watching, once I've actually stuck it through a capture and then placed it into a video editor and then put it onto YouTube, when it goes up there, you get all these cloudy pixels and stuff. It doesn't look great. Um, so I would imagine that's going to do something similar. We'll have to see it in practice. Graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part 2 running on PS5 okay. Pro. That's pretty impressive. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Ah, ah you, can, you, can, this. you can see the muddiness. Look, where I've poured it, paused this right now, you see all this pixelization over on PS5 Pro. All this, all this up here, look, look, all this cloudy, muddy. This is what I'm on about. This pixely sort of mess, this jank, this junk particles. Yeah, it looks great when you're playing. But once you, this is how it looks when you get it onto YouTube, yeah. And people are probably saying, yeah, it would probably look amazing on a 4K or 8K screen or whatever. But yeah, but this is what I'm on about. Um, all that sort of lovely stuff that he's just mentioned does this. It gives this sort of noise. So I turn it all off. Now, if they don't let you turn it off, all the games are going to look like that when they get, end up on freaking YouTube. And it's not much discernible difference to PlayStation 5 Fidelity mode. It's still got the same sort of noise. Yeah, this is slightly smoother, looks a bit more aliased. But looking at both of these images right now, where I've paused it, I actually would say that the PlayStation Fidelity looks better. I mean, I can see the freaking Jeep up there. It just looks like a splodge. Oh okay, yeah, anyway, um, unless the Jeep hasn't pulled up yet. <laughs> the fidelity mode on ps5 which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier yeah i could see that it is a lot choppier now i have got dragon's dogma on my dragon's dogma 2 on my pc and i've also got it on my playstation dragon's dogma 2 on my playstation at 30 frames per second was horrible smooth as butter on pc um but then they put out an update for playstation 5 and now it's 60 frames a second and it looks a lot better This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Okay, I've paused it there. Spot the difference. I don't see any difference. 
I don't really see any discernible difference. I don't. I honestly don't. <laughs> and Ratchet and Clank rift apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Um, or maybe I paused that at a bad time. <laughs> PlayStation 5 looks blurry as shite. One sec. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Slightly, I mean, if you look at the little hot air balloon blimp type thing in the background of a robot, on the PlayStation 5 it looks slightly more blurred, whereas on the PlayStation 5 it looks slightly more in focus, and also the building in the background as well. But that's not much of a difference. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5 both of which target 60 frames per second. Okay, this is a better comparison. What we see here is a difference in detail. P um... <laughs> okay, all right, I'm looking at this little bloke in the background, by the fence, you see him, by the little... On PlayStation 5 Pro, I can actually make out that he's got like a blue shirt on, whereas on the PlayStation performance mode, I can see that his, his top is open, but then again, it looks slightly more zoomed in over on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now, the signs on the actual hut, I can kind of make out the text a little bit better on the PlayStation 5 Pro. I'd say that it's a little bit higher resolution or it appears that way. But everything else, even the staining and aging on the building and the brickwork, I can't see much of a difference. Everything that's up this end and further into the foreground, no, no difference. It's the stuff that's in distance draw that I'm seeing is slightly sharper. And it's only slight. It's it's not worlds apart, is it? It really isn't worlds apart. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. Well, there we go. For Zoomed this, in on the bits I was on about. parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. Okay, so I'm looking at the little alien up in the back, like, it's got a big green head. It's obscured a bit by the um, the bunting going across. But other than that, I see no... F it's... It's it's a gnat's whisker! The difference is a gnat's freaking whisker. Oh, when you look at the other... You see that? It's like a, a grey sort of round thing with bricks on. It looks like some sort of planter. It's got some bush sticking out the top of it. It's shrubbery. But that is a little bit clearer as well. You, you can see the individual tiles a lot better. Whereas on the PlayStation 5, you can still see that they're individual, but it's not as... as. Again, it's, it's a gnat's whisker. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene. Um... Oh. Including the trees. Just wanted to get that van out of the way. You see, I, I can see the driver in the truck on the PlayStation 5. And the PlayStation 5 Pro, you know, I can see the driver inside of that Jeep. Um, I'm trying to look at other reflections and things. I'm seeing no obvious discernible difference. I mean, the zebra crossing, the actual lines on the road are a little bit more visible on the PlayStation 5, but everything is slightly more... It looks like the lighting is better on the PlayStation 5. I give you that, just. But even the shadows, when you look at the sharpness of the shadows inside of this, they're almost identical. And it look, when you look at stuff that's closer to camera, say like the two waste paper baskets at the side of the street, when you look at those, you can see all the individual prongs in both images. When you go back to that truck, the articulated lorry in PlayStation 5 Pro and compare it to PlayStation 5, it's not quite as far forwards. If it was up to those lines, I'd imagine it would look identical. I'm just, just saying, I'm just... So far, I haven't seen a massive uplift that's made me go, wow, this is amazing. And procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. <laughs> on PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. Remarkable! This is the big three showing there. Oh. 
Really? As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. Right. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects. Now, Horizon is a very impressive looking game on PlayStation 5 anyway. Um, and uh, if you put these next to each other, PlayStation 5 Pro and PlayStation, you're probably not going to notice hardly anything because the amount of work that's gone into making this a masterpiece and optimization is, is another level. It's a freaking beautiful game. I mean, you see all those mountains just behind me here. You know, that, that distance draw in here is freaking phenomenal. I don't think they could improve this on PlayStation 5 Pro is what I'm saying. As well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jorah's orders. Good enough for me. I'd imagine the reason that they haven't done the side-to-side -side comparison on this is because this is how it looks on the PlayStation 5 anyway. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well. Particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates, the faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between. Okay, now you see the yellow car and the blue car. You can actually see the reflection of the yellow car in the side of the blue car. That is real time ray tracing. That's pretty beautiful. That's pretty phenomenal. That is pretty awesome. What I'd love to know is if I then got my PlayStation VR 2 headset and plugged it into my PlayStation 5 Pro, am I going to see those reflections inside of VR? Hmm. Between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That's cool. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy. That's beautiful allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, mm -hmm. but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. Okay. Now, what I would say is I've just been playing No Man's Sky Worlds, and they've just added water and reflections into that game, and also the shadows they've added in Gato Shadows. Everything that we've seen here that's on the PlayStation 5 Pro, in all of these games, if you just hit on up No Man's Sky right now, you've got all this. And it, you can actually, it actually runs at 60 frames per second in a really nice high resolution. It's aiming at 4K, 60K frames per second. It's freaking awesome. If you haven't got No Man's Sky, get No Man's Sky. That shows off what the PlayStation 5 can do. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. But how much is Let it? Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. Go for it, mate. Go for it. Oh, dear. This is where I probably get a strike. I don't know what I had to throw James Bondy music into the mix. Okay. The Final Fantasy already looks that good. So does Horizon Zero Dawn. Close your eyes. It, it'll be worth it. Okay. Okay, Last of Us, uh, uh, whatever, that's been given a bit of a lift. What game's that? Ratchet and Clank? Nice. What's with all the neon? Well, that's not out yet. That is quite impressive. Okay. Ha yeah, Harry Potter looks a lot nicer. I was dragon stopping it right there. <laughs> no! Vertical stand sold separately. 
You're telling me that I've got to try and find my own vertical stand? 699.99 in UK and it's the same in dollars. What the? Have you not heard of exchange rate? <laughs> oh, no. And for that price, they couldn't put the vertical stand in for freaking free. Are you having a freaking Jeffrey, mate? Okay. All right. If I was to hit up Amazon right now, I could go on there and I could probably get a 7900 series AMD graphics card, which is probably going to be four times as powerful as the PlayStation. Granted, it's going to be about 700 quid. And then I need to get a tower case, memory, a hard drive and all the other bits to build my game in PC. Or I could get a GeForce 4070 Ti for about 750 quid, you know, depend on make. Which is freaking awesome as well. We've just got a lot more upscaling capabilities. In fact, if you went for probably about 950 quid, you could probably get an already pre-built gaming PC, a 4060 Ti, okay? Which is probably still four times more powerful than a PlayStation 5. This was said to be 40% more powerful than a PlayStation 5. Four times more powerful for an extra 200 quid. Now, if I was to trade in my PlayStation, which has got a disk drive on it, this doesn't have a disk drive. There's no disk drive. I have to buy a disk drive separately if you want hard copies of games. Is there any is there any disk model available for this? I've only just spotted that, sorry people. So you might have to buy a disk drive on top. So say you buy your stand, you buy your disk drive, you're looking at near on 800 quid probably for this thing. Yeah? Well, 800 quid, you, you probably get yourself a pre-built gaming PC that's about 40, 60 if you're lucky. You know, if you shop around a bit. Freaking mental. Anyway, yeah, if I was to trade in my PlayStation, I'm probably going to get maybe, what, two, 260 for it, if I'm lucky. Trade that against this. Oh, my days. That's quite a lot of money that I've got to put my hand in my pocket for to upgrade to the new PlayStation 5 Pro. The only way I would consider a PlayStation 5 Pro is right now the PlayStation 5 is, is, is fairly holding its money. You know, it's still going to be hard push to find a PlayStation 5 for around you know, 450 quid, something like that. So then you'll be looking at it and thinking, hold on, if the PlayStation 5 is going to be costing me 450 quid, let's say 500 for simple maths if I want a game with it or something, 500 quid. For an extra 200 quid, I could have the PlayStation 5 Pro. Then it starts to make sense. You might think, well, I shell out an extra 200 quid. It's going to future proof me that little bit longer. Lovely jubbly. But then when you look at the roster of games that actually show off the potential of the PlayStation 5, just the base PlayStation 5, there is maybe a dozen games at best that show us off the capabilities of the PlayStation 5. And then you're probably going to have to halve that for the games that are going to show off the capabilities of the PlayStation 5 Pro because of what I said earlier, that every single games developer has to think, well, let's do it for last gen, current gen, and now this freaking whatever this hybrid monster is. But they're still limited by the weakest link. They've got to get it working on the weakest link. And that's probably where they spend their most dev time is trying to get it to work on these older... Co we need to drop last gen for these next gen games, for the next gen games to really shine. And that's just not happened. It hasn't because nobody's really adopted these new consoles and moved from their old console to the new one because all the games that are out on the new consoles are also available on the old consoles. Look at Cyberpunk, pretty freaking decent example right there. I mean, it still looks great on last gen, but imagine how much greater it would look if it was just developed for next gen consoles. When you look at the PC version of Cyberpunk running a few mods, it looks freaking real. It's unbelievably cool. And it could look that unbelievably cool and show off what a PlayStation 5 Pro would do. Right now, we've got nothing that's making me go, wow, I have to have a PlayStation 5 Pro. That game looks amazing. I mean, Hogwarts, out of all of those, look the best. It's got more reflective surfaces. Is it worth 700 quid of my money? <laughs> no, no, it freaking isn't. No, it really isn't. They need to have a better roster of games that show off the ray tracing, show off the shadow effects, and they just don't got that. 
because they haven't developed enough, they haven't brought enough IPs over, they haven't they haven't fleshed out what they've already got IP wise. You know, there's quite a lot that they've just sat on. You know, yes, they redone some of the Souls games, or one of the Souls games, but what about Bloodborne? That that that's sitting right in their back pocket. Ah, uh, they could even give Elden Ring a graphical uplift, I suppose, couldn't they? I suppose. I mean, that they do love from software. I mean, they gave one of the freaking Souls games an uplift, and it looks freaking phenomenal. And that was at launch, and I'm still referring to that. Why am I still referring to that? Because it's the only real best example of it showing off its power. That and Horizon Zero Dawn and perhaps, you know, the, the Avatar game, which is fairly recent. But at the same time, that, that got a bit boring quick. But then anyway, going off on a side tangent. It's not worth the 700 quid unless I was about to go out and buy a brand new PlayStation 5 and I saw the Pro sitting there and it's 200 quid more. I might go, you know what, let's just fork out the extra 200 quid. Might as well get it. You know, it's 200 quid. But then, if you're looking at that, you think, hold on, for another 200 quid on top of that, I could have a 4060 Ti gaming PC for a grand that could probably run Meta freaking free VR. I think I'll be thinking, oh God, I might as well just fork out and get a bloody gaming PC. I don't think this quite captures the console market as much as it should. In fact, I think people are going to look at this price tag and say, hold on, I think it's time I made that jump from console to PC because I'm virtually there pocket wise and money wise. I may as well get, the, I may as well invest in a gaming PC. I mean, after all, it's got an all round multimedia experience. I can I can do freaking work on there. You know, I can browse the internet unhindered. You know, if I do go for VR plugged into my PC, I can do so much more than VR plugged into a PlayStation freaking Pro. You know, I, I can watch Netflix. I can watch Disney. I can browse millions of games, not just a freaking bucketful. Anyway, I don't think it's worth the 700 quid. I think this is going to be a very hard sell for Sony. I mean, we are coming up to Christmas, but 700 quid for a freaking Christmas present. What this might do, what this might do is make all the other PlayStations that are out the PlayStation Slim and the old PlayStation drop in price by 100 odd quid. And if that happens, when parents go to the counter and they see a PlayStation 5 Slim for maybe, you know, thrive the price of this freaking monster, they're probably going to go, yeah, we're getting that. And you know what? With the extra cash, we'll buy a freaking load of second-hand games for our kids. Because it's got a freaking disk drive and I'm in CEX or I'm in some sort of GameStop store that's got loads of second-hand titles around me that are on disk. That's not got a disk drive. So every game you buy on that, you're going to be limited to buying brand new off the freaking store, aren't you? Digital. And it's only got a two terabyte drive. Okay, um, I'm getting a bit ranty now because I've just realised that I think it's only shot themselves in the foot. Okay, how does this end? Uh, please, it's not April, is it? It's not April 1st. No. <laughs> Play has no limits. It does if you don't have freaking 700 quid in your pocket. Okay, um, is that it? Is that how you want to end it? Is it just, oh, okay. Right, people. Um. <laughs> ah, how? How? Bring back Jim Ryan. Oh, my days. Mark Cerny, Mark Cerny, Mark Cerny. You know what would have been better? If they actually went to play on the go. If they brought out something that was similar to a Steam Deck. I know that they've got a remote play console already, but it's not really true remote play. It's streaming play. It streams from your PlayStation 5 to it. That's not good enough. You know, I want something that I can take on a plane. You know, if I'm going abroad, offline mode, bang, playing my fa favorite title, as long as it's got no online features, on a portable unit like a Steam Deck. They should have gone that way and maybe even made it a little bit more like having a Nintendo Switch. So perhaps on the back of it, it's got two pads that sort of come off, like game pads, like miniature ones or something. And it's got a HDMI that you can plug into your mate's TV. 
So you could go around to your friend's house, plug it into the TV, two little joy pads, boom, you're playing a PlayStation 5 on a portable bit of kit. That's what I think would have sold like freaking hotcakes, not a PlayStation 5 Pro right now. Because the actual games we've got, they're just, when you look at the differences between these two comparisons when it was firing up, it's just not there. It really isn't. Ah. Uh, if you think I've got a point on this, sound off in the comments, let me know. It, would you like a PlayStation 5 Steam Decky type thing that's more portable on the go play? You know, that you could probably take to work if you get it out on your freaking lunch break, you know? You go on a plane, play it on a plane. You're in a hotel somewhere, play it there. Go out of a mate's house, plug it in via HDMI. I would have much rather that. Especially if it did have a port to plug in the PlayStation VR as well. So I could go sit in my living room, plug my PlayStation VR in, stick in a headset or whatever, boom, I'm in a virtual reality landscape, you know? That would have been freaking epic. This is not epic. You know, this is, um, this is a gentle lift up from what we already have. <sighs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on this, people, but I just don't think the PlayStation lineup of games is strong enough to carry a PlayStation 5 Pro right now. It's, it's barely doing it for the PlayStation 5. I don't think Sony has made enough pushes to bring titles that are exclusive to the actual console either. Virtually every exclusive that the PlayStation 5 has goes over to PC anyway, and for an extra 200 quid more, you're gonna get a decent game in PC that is going to blow all of this out of the water I don't know. It, I don't want to come across and sound like I'm, um, you know, the master race gaming PC all the way, because I do see the charm of having a console. Consoles are simple, plug and play, away you go, and it's it's fun, you know. However, with the the removal of a freaking disc drive on it. I mean, that's one of the draws of having a console. You can walk into GameStop or CEX over here in the UK and you can pick up secondhand titles on disc. You can jump on eBay and buy a secondhand game on disc. You know, it's the whole, that's gone. That's That whole avenue seems to be gone with this and they've got no mention of whether you can attach a disc drive to it. I don't know. It seems to me that you're paying 700 quid just to have an extra black stripe down the side of your freaking console. And to be honest, that looks like a dust trap and a half. It's all, it looks like gills on a freaking fish. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm not, this whole upscaling thing, that has to be seen. I would like to see somebody stream a game live onto YouTube using a PlayStation 5 Pro. Are we going to see any difference between the PlayStation 5 Pro in streaming against the PlayStation 5? Because I don't think we will. Uh, or even pre-rendered footage. I, I don't think we're going to be able to see a discernible difference. And that's probably why we're having a hard job spotting the difference right here on a YouTube video. Because of that. I'd imagine to Mark Cerny with an 8K screen running both, yes, you're gonna see a massive difference because the PlayStation 5 is only putting out to 4K, where the PlayStation 5 Pro, I think, can do a little bit better. <laughs> I just, I don't, I'm, just, I'm laughing because I'm looking, I'm still looking at this going, yeah, where's the difference? Where's the difference? And I don't, I don't, I don't physically see it, people. Um, maybe I need to go Specsavers and have my eyes tested because, I'm, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing the same game on both sides. Anyway, peeps, um, I'm not seeing a lift that makes me go, "Oh my god!" Now, apart from Harry Potter was quite impressive. I would have showcased more of Harry Potter with the reflections, to be honest, rather than this. But you know, that's up to them, isn't it? Really? I mean, I see no real difference there at all. Anyway. I'm going off, I'm covering ground I've already covered. Sound off in the comments, let us know. I've, I've finished my freaking hot beverage anyway. Anyway, take care, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.